So we are today in the premises of the European Commission uh, where we should talk about the biodiversity area net uh, coordinated by uh, Xavier Leroux from FRB. Biodiversa is one of the projects that was selected under the six primer program and uh, following a complete bottom-up uh, selection process and is therefore a project of high quality selected at the time. What is an Aeronet? It is a, a scheme under the uh, EU research framework programs uh, which aims at coordinating uh, programs at national or regional levels. So the goal of the Aeronet is to uh, make regional and national programs work together closely to coordinate their work and that can happen in four steps. Exchange of information of the programs, it can happen by making uh, joint agendas of, of research to be uh, carried out. It could also be different types of activities like the exchange of experts, um, uh, common uh, communication programs, etc. Or, as a last step, the uh, joint call for proposals where the different programs put money together and then uh, implement uh, joint uh, uh, activities. Hello, my name is uh, Xavier Leroux and uh, I'm an ecologist, uh, director of the French Foundation for uh, Research on Biodiversity and currently uh, coordinator of the Aeronet Biodiversa. Biodiversa is uh, an Aeronet in the field of uh, biodiversity research and uh, it uh, emerged in 2005 where uh, 19 different uh, national agencies from 13 different countries together decided to work uh, in order to be able to uh, develop joint activities to launch one or a few joint calls to support research on biodiversity at the European level. It uh, lasted uh, for five years and uh, it will uh, last uh, in late uh, April 2010. One objective is to uh, make sure that the different agencies will be able to agree on a given topic uh, what kind of research uh, we have to support and uh, this has to be done according to the priorities determined at the international level but also at the national level and uh, sharing these priorities we can define key priorities and a real added value at a European scale for a consortium such as Biodiversa. This is one step. The second step uh, will be to define the procedure for launching the call, the criterion in order to uh, select the different research projects, and we will have to find a subtle uh, equilibrium between people uh, focusing on uh, scientific excellence, for instance, and other agencies focusing on policy relevance, and we have to define exactly what type of research we want in terms of topics and in terms of policy relevance and scientific excellence. In the life of Biodiversa, a milestone was uh, to launch a joint call to support research projects on biodiversity. It was a milestone because uh, it was a great, a great success, this call, because uh, we have nearly 200 uh, different uh, responses in terms of uh, proposals. Uh, indeed, uh, we supported finally 12 different research projects uh, on different topics uh, for a total amount of 14, more than 14 million euros. And this has uh, never been achieved before for the research on biodiversity. Uh, even uh, at a European scale. So this shows to what extent such a tool can make a difference. Important at European level uh, for Euronets, as uh, for other networks that we are supporting, is that they have a life at a longer time, that uh, they are sustained and sustained even beyond the period of time where the EU funding is, is uh, given. Uh, it's very important that the uh, researchers, that the programs continue working uh, across the destinies 
but also that they uh, enlarge uh, the participants so that uh, new countries can uh, join the networks. Biodiversity is a, a relatively scientific and technical term, but it's important to underline that uh, uh, researchers need uh, stakeholders, whether they are civil, civil society organizations, uh, NGOs or local authorities, policy makers, uh, as well as those uh, stakeholders uh, need researchers to find solutions. Solutions can be found uh, at local level, at regional level, at a European level, depending on the challenge, depending on the problem. But uh, we need to communicate uh, from one side to the other to actually uh, address the problems properly and find the solutions. The aim of RACE is to examine the effects of a new emerging infectious disease in European amphibian populations. We have identified a chytrid fungus which is spreading aggressively from other parts of the world and is causing catastrophic declines in some European amphibian populations. The disease was first detected in Spain, north of Madrid. Now we are studying it in Switzerland, in England and in France. In the Pyrenees, Dr. Dirk Schmeller and his collaborants at Mulis are working on mountain populations of amphibians to study the effects of the pathogen. Hello, bonjour, guten tag. I'm Dirk Schmeller. I'm researcher for the CNRS here in Mulis and part of the RACE project, which is financed by Biodiversa. I will explain you a little bit about chytridiomycosis, an amphibian disease, and its impact on the amphibian diversity in Europe. So um, he will take uh, now a sample from uh, from the skin, kind of. By uh, scratching over the skin, he will uh, uh, detect, uh, or he will get all of the zoo spores uh, into the small um, cotton. And uh, afterwards we, we close the swap and it's a tri-swap, so there's nothing to add. Uh, the DNA will stay uh, fine with this kind of swap for um, six to nine months. Well, the race is not uh, running for a long time, it's one year now. So it started at the 1st of March 2009, uh, officially. So that's when the Biodiversa funding was available to the different partners. And uh, since then, we, we have done uh, monitoring of all the populations of Alides in our in, in environment, in our closer region. Uh, we have done the analysis of uh, over uh, roughly 4,000 uh, samples. Um, only in the Pyrenees, so uh, there's plenty of more coming in from other parts which we uh, analyze in addition. So here we are in the animal housing place which has been financed entirely by the Biodiversa project and um, we wish to investigate the impact of the disease, of the Kitri disease, um, not only if the disease kills individuals, but also if the disease can um, prevent uh, animals to breed properly or breed as well as, as if they would not be sick. The race people in general, uh, we are always out in the field during uh, spring, summer, and early early autumn as we are always a, a, a couple of a, a small group of four to five uh, doing some strange rituals around uh, ponds it's of course interesting for people to ask us what are we doing and we always use this opportunity to explain to people uh, 
what we do, why we do it, what kit 3D mycosis is and why our work is really important. So for the moment, uh, RACE focuses uh, the sampling efforts or the monitoring efforts on amphibians in the countries of the different partners. Which means uh, there is a major focus in France because uh, here we detected chytridia mycosis in the Pyrenees, detected by Heimer Bosch and, and Matthew Fischer. Uh, there's a lot of work going on in Spain, uh, there's work going on in, in England, and uh, of course there's also some work in, in Germany. It's definitely very important that we can cover whole, the whole of Europe uh, in the West and in the East. And, uh, well, we have first results, we have first patterns, we are still collecting environmental data, data on tourist movement, on uh, fishing, and so on, so that we later on can relate the spatial pattern we find in the infection with other parameters. Thanks to Biodiversa, the work of race has shown that the pathogen has been introduced into Eastern European countries and that is likely going to cause effects on amphibian biodiversity there. Our wider work is to understand what these disease-driven losses in amphibian biodiversity might have on the wider biodiversity of this region in other animals, in other plants and eventually impacts onto humans. Uh, Linktree is a project that involves six uh, partners, two from Spain, two from France, one from Germany and one from Sweden. And uh, in this area there is a lot of problem with dying trees because of climate change. Uh, right now we are in a site where Abies alba, the silver fir, uh, European silver fir, is uh, dying quite a lot actually, but also at the same time regenerating. So we feel that there is potential for adaptation in this place, as there is in other places in Europe. The aim of Linktree is to study local adaptation from the genes to the ecosystems. Uh, tree populations have two options under climate change. They can either migrate on the one hand or adapt on the other hand. Migration will be very difficult, so we expect that adaptation will play a strong role in the future of tree populations in Europe. Je viens d'effectuer un carottage, donc cette carotte va partir au laboratoire à Avignon et ensuite, après analyse, on pourra déterminer la réaction de l'arbre par rapport au changement climatique actuel. Euh, J'interviens dans le projet Linktree au niveau de la partie biologie moléculaire, euh, génotypage et séquençage afin de mettre en évidence euh, soit euh, des liens de parenté entre individus récoltés sur le terrain par Norbert, soit euh, du polymorphisme dans des gènes d'intérêt qui sont en l'occurrence les gènes de résistance à la sécheresse. Uh, here in Mont Ventoux, um, 150 years ago, there were no trees. So the trees you can see now come from uh, the combination of human management, man has replanted trees, and natural recolonization and adaptation to local conditions. So by combining human impact or human management and natural processes, biodiversity can actually uh, increase. Donc je vais le compter. Donc il y a trois ans celui-là. D'accord, donc je peux le géoréférencer. Tu peux le prendre, oui. Le numéro, c'est le N2. N2. S. S. 227. 227. Géoréférencement. 
effectué, c'est bon. Allez, autrement. Uh, from the genes we will discover in the project, we will go from the lab to the field and study how those genes react in nature. Are they variable or not? Um, are they variable locally or do they vary from site to site? Once we know this, we can actually address a question posed by policymakers or managers such as are our forests sustainable? Can they sustain climate change? Will they be able to survive when climate change or not? Donc d'après les analyses que nous obtenons, en fait, on essaie de voir s'il y a euh, une, un effet de sélection du réchauffement climatique sur euh, les, certains gènes de résistance à la sécheresse. Et les données que nous obtenons sont ensuite utilisées pour euh, alimenter ces modèles. We calibrated the mechanisms with all the demographic and genetics measures made since the beginning. Thanks to such results, we are now able to simulate catastrophic events like storms or very dry summer to simulate the evolution of forests during one or two hundred years. Um, our projects will provide new tools and a better understanding of scientific basis of adaptation, which in turn will be useful for managers and policy makers for managing forests across Europe in a better way under climate change. EcoCycle is a research project that is conducted on a European scale that involves four countries where the fluctuation of uh, some small herbivores are having a large impact on whole ecosystems. So those are small rodents that mostly feed on grass. They are very abundant and they are very fecund. They are extremely important in many ecosystems because they feed a large number of species of conservation concern. Most of your birds of prey, buzzards, owls, kestrels, many mammals, foxes, weasels, uh, rely on voles. Some highly endangered species also rely on voles uh, very much. So what happens to the vole populations will have impacts into the whole ecosystem. There is a fascinating and striking change that has taken place in a number of countries of, in, of Europe where those vole populations or lemming populations also used to fluctuate in a very regular manner. There was a cycle. Every three to four years you would have very high abundance of those species. Recently that cycle fl fluctuation has been changing, has become less and less pronounced. What is fascinating is that the, the same change has taken place from Lapland in Norway to here in the UK, to southwest France, and another similar change in northern Spain. Within the EcoCycle project, I'm one of the demographers of the team. On one end of the spectrum, you've got tony holes that I'm monitoring, I'm studying just now, which are uh, generalized predators, which are uh, highly sight uh, faithful. So once they decide to breed in one place, they stay there for life, and their life can be quite long, up to 15, 20 years. And basically they don't move, whatever the availability of voles in their territory. They are territorial species. Okay, on the other end of the spectrum, you've got species like Arctic fox, for instance, or Montagus harriers as well, in farming landscape across Central Europe, which are basically tracking, seeking for the best place, the best, the, the hot spots in terms of vole density, for breeding and therefore they can travel from one year to the other, from one breeding season to the other to the next breeding season, several hundred of kilometers, sometimes more than 500 kilometers. And obviously when you travel within Europe uh, 500 kilometers you always, you very often actually cross borders. So this is another reason why uh, our project EcoCycle has to rely on a European partnership. So, 
As researchers, we work on uh, the land of many types of landowners. Sometimes we work in national parks, or here we work in a managed commercial forest. In other places, we work in farmland. So we already have a degree of communication with, with people on whose land we work. In many cases, those people are very interested in understanding the ecosystem in which they, they work, in which they live, either personally or professionally. In many of the national parks where we work, it is the remit of those people to protect the species that we are studying. So there is a great appetite, a great interest for them to find out what uh, drives those populations and how they will change. We generally have an update with Xavier uh, about once a year where he <coughs> makes us aware of some of the other uh, uh, the other research work that's going on in the rest of Europe um, and that really that's very important because it, it shows us um, how the research project here is also um, important for other European countries as well. Um, we don't necessarily change a great deal um, with the information that we get but um, the information he provides us, the research we're involved in, uh, means we have a better understanding of the forest as an ecosystem. Um, but also that uh, high quality research like this is, is quite rare and uh, that we'd like to see it uh, continued well into the future. The process we are researching in a range of ecosystems, tundra, forest, farmland, are almost certainly the result of climate change, affecting, first of all, those voles that eat grass, but indirectly and profoundly, many species rely on voles, the predators of those species. So one general message of the ecocycle is that the impact of climate change can sometimes be very complex and indirect and difficult to predict and having excellent science is essential for that. I strongly believe that promoting science-based management or conservation of wildlife is absolutely critical in the uh, current context of uh, global changes. So Biomarx uh, is the only actually marine project in Biodiversa and I have just taken this glass of water from the sea and in this glass of water you have about you know a billion uh, bodies, organisms. You know everyone would know what more or less what a virus, a bacteria, a plant or an animal is. But there is a fifth category of living organisms which are the protists. In fact, protists are, are, they are called eukaryotes because they are unicellular organisms with a nucleus inside which contains the genetic material. Protists are the ancestors of plants and animals, but they are different than bacteria and viruses. And for me, they are really the least known you know, piece of life on Earth. So it's very important to, to, uh, to understand what they are doing in the, in the environment. Uh, within the biomarks, I, um, I work with identifying species uh, and I do that by uh, using light and electron microscopy uh, uh, and um, I look for uh, uh, look at their morphology and um, for certain characters that I can use for identifying them. The biomarks sample uh, many places in Europe. It's a collaboration between uh, Norway, uh, France, Spain, Italy, and uh, we have samplings in all these countries and I've been uh, part of the sampling in Oslo and also in Roscoff and I hope to be a part of the sampling in some of the other places as well.
and then we want to link the diversity to the physical chemical parameters of the water. And we will insist on, on parameters that are you know, threatening the ecology, like ocean acidification and uh, pollution. So we'll have different sites in more or less acidified water and polluted sites, and we'll you know, link this huge diversity, how it varies according to the, to the environment. The Roscoff Culture Collection, we're, we're one of the largest uh, culture collections uh, of, of microalgae in France and in fact in the world. So cultures uh, are, are very interesting in, in many contexts, in environmental contexts and more applied contexts. In terms of environment, there's uh, research on, on toxin. Yes, the aim in the future is uh, to get a lot of data and to establish the baseline of protist diversity and this is only by novel sequencing technologies uh, which is able to, to get this data. Uh, establishing how many species there are in the environment and also because we have sampling sites in different places in the European coast, we can also compare the diversity in different places which is also a very interesting question. We have no idea how diverse protists are. What we know is that they are complex organisms. They have genomes which contain very often more genes than humans. So what we will discover is you know, an immense diversity of species and genes and metabolisms that have you know, tremendous importance for global ecology. In fact, we know that protists have relocated massive amounts of, of elements on the planet, like oxygen, carbon, and also they have many genes that can be important for you know, pharmaceutics or, or to understand how the global ecology works. So we are, we are going to discover a lot, a lot of very important diversity to understand the Earth system as a whole.